As Peter Parker burns his bridges with the superhero community, whatever became of Mary Jane Watson in the strange world ruled by the Y app? Well, let's hop into the pages of Amazing Spider-Man issue number 25 and find out together, shall we? Alrighty then, so as we join the issue, we actually get a restaging of the end of the big battle with Spider-Man and the Y app. Only, I think we can all agree that it actually looks a little bit better. You'll remember how this story ended, the dark Mayan god was cut in half, Spider-Man was sent back to the main universe while Mary Jane was left behind. And the bulk of this issue is spent dealing with what actually happened to her and Paul during all of those unaccounted four years. And you know what, honestly, it's about goddamn time they finally answered some of these questions. I've had a lot of problems with this new Zeb Wells era of Spider-Man, but it really chapped my ass how we never actually got to see any of this from Mary Jane's point of view, understand how she's feeling about all of this. We just kinda gotta ride shotgun with Peter. And if you've been paying attention for the last couple arcs, you'll realize that, well, Peter is really annoying to be around recently. As we learn, after the YF was defeated, Paul wanted to run, but Mary Jane refused, knowing that it was only a matter of time before Peter came back for her. In fact, she even took a small piece of Spider-Man's costume and wrapped it around her arm. Hell, she even slaps the shit out of Paul for even just suggesting the fact that they should run, knowing that it's probably only a matter of time before Dr. Rabin comes back. Flash forward three months in this universe where time moves differently, and indeed Paul was correct. Dr. Rabin returns, but well, he just kind of sucks as a villain, so Mary Jane and Paul are able to run him off with big Road Warrior-style apocalypse guns. Also, seriously, why are we supposed to be scared of Rabin? Everything he's done so far is blown up in his face. Also, I love that we're reserving the oh-so-classic comic book trope if you're trapped in a dark alternate dimension or in an evil future, you gotta start dressing. All paramilitary-style with vests and bandoliers. And be sure to top it off with a big cheesy Rambo-style headband for extra points. Obviously, this is silly, but this is the kind of comic book silly I actually enjoy. But I get the feeling none of this is what all of you came here for. It's what's next that actually matters. With Dr. Rabin finding where Mary Jane and Paul have been hiding, they have no choice but to flee the city and go deeper into the country in this blighted, hellish wasteland. It's while scavenging for food, the two end up coming upon two scared children, Owen and Ron who they end up having to take with them for safekeeping. So there you go, everyone. It's not actually their two kids. They're adopted. From there, time starts moving quicker and quicker. Days become weeks, weeks become months, and months end up becoming years. In fact, as we discover, Mary Jane and Paul were trapped in this alternate world for about four full years. In that time, they end up becoming a lot closer, not only with each other, but with the children who they truly end up taking, seeing them as their actual son and daughter. And because I'm sure some people are are weirdly obsessed with this for some reason. It looks like Mary Jane and Paul don't actually end up getting intimate with each other until a couple years in. Meaning that they bonded as parents and guardians before eventually starting their own romantic relationship. In fact, Mary Jane even helped Paul with his research into those weird mathematical runes, and it's that reason to defend themselves from Rabin and the horrors of this Mayan blood god universe that Mary Jane developed slot machine-based superpowers, or jackpot powers, as she called it. Oh yes, some of you forgot that Mary Jane actually had superpowers in that Black Cat Dark Web tie-in. Eventually, though, the couple's happy nuclear family ends up coming under attack by Dr. Rabin once again. Mary Jane tries to use her jackpot powers to fight him off, but unfortunately, these powers are by their very design random. Rabin still seems to be under the delusion that the only way that he can earn favor with his dark Mayan god is by killing the Scarlet Woman, which obviously means means Mary Jane. From here, the story ends up hooking up with the end of the previous issue. Spider-Man manages to make his way back to this universe. Rabin is defeated. Peter attempts to reconcile with Mary Jane, only to realize that she's lived an entire alternate life in this universe and now has a loving family that depends on her. Everyone ends up making it back home to 616 New York, and we actually do get a scene with Mary Jane and Peter talking to each other. Peter mourns what could have been between the two and wishes that he was only faster. Again, as far as he's concerned it was just a month ago the two were talking about moving back in together. Hell, if we're still going on the canon from the end of the Nick Spencer era, he had a ring he was going to propose, and now it seems that he'll never get the chance. 
I mean, yeah, that hurts and is all pretty tragic and everything, but at least Spider-Man managed to make it a whole issue without embarrassing himself. No, no, he totally embarrasses himself a couple minutes later. You see, after burning every bridge he had and breaking the trust of a bunch of his super friends, Spider-Man is now forced to reap what he sows as the Fantastic Four is waiting for him outside, ready to kick his ass for stealing from them and breaking their trust. Spider-Man probably could have defused this whole situation with just a simple apology. After all, Mary Mary Jane is back now, so it proves that he wasn't being delusional or controlled by a supervillain or something, but no, Peter Parker, master of maturity that he is, decides to get into a fist fight with the Fantastic Four. And you're probably thinking to yourself, well, you know, I can understand where he's coming from, he's been through a lot and he's lashing out. Yeah, the only problem is Peter says just that, that this is indeed him lashing out at his friend, so he knows it's wrong, but he's doing it anyway. The fight is only stopped too when Captain America steps on in, and after all, Steve is the only person who's even kind of, sort of. Emotionally mature in this story, he says whatever Peter is going through right now, it must be pretty bad, worse than any beat down they can lay on him, so they should probably just let him go and ghost him for a bit. Which is exactly what they end up doing. After that, we get a series of snapshots showing Peter leave his old roommate behind, making Aunt May worry about him, and even taking a swing at Paul. Jesus Christ, Peter, there's taking it bad, and then there's taking it bad. Oh, but wait, the comic's not done yet because we get one final stinger where we see Dr. Rabin is not only alive, but empowered by the YF. Meaning that he now has one last chance in a laundry list of last chances to complete his dark Mayan blood ritual by finally killing Mary Jane. And it's on that note right there, the comic comes to an end, everyone. And so that was Amazing Spider-Man issue 25. And obviously it's not good because nothing in this arc has been good and I feel like I've shouted myself hoarse trying to explain why. But this issue in particular I found to be quite annoying because I can almost, almost see a scenario where in this kind of story would have worked, but unfortunately Zeb Wells just doesn't seem to have the courage of his own convictions. When writing Mary Jane in this story, and admittedly a lot of that isn't his fault, truth be told, Mary Jane hasn't really felt like a genuine character in God almost 20 years now. These days she's almost always ever shown to be a prize to be won or a mouthpiece for a writer or a company with something to say. So if your plan really was to break her and Peter up and have them go their separate ways, maybe for a while, maybe forever, I don't know, you could have done this story. The only problem is, is that there really is no narrative push behind any of it. Mary Jane, as far as we know, was happy with Peter. They were going to move in together. It would be one thing if she was unhappy or unfulfilled. And having four years to build a life and have children with a dude who seems to be much more stable than Peter, you could have done something there. The only problem is... The story doesn't really do enough with that concept. We only see Mary Jane and Paul's life with the kids in snapshots. Hell, we never even get an internal monologue from Mary Jane. We don't even know what she's thinking. We don't know what she's thinking. We don't know what she wants. We don't know what her dreams and aspirations are. And frankly, we haven't known for a very long time. This is just kind of a thing that happened because it needed to happen to service this brand new unpopular status quo. Hell, you could change just a couple things and tell this story in more or less the same way and it could ultimately end up being a real growing experience for Peter. Have him take a long, hard look at himself. Maybe have him come to the realization that he'll never be a stable partner for Mary Jane, and that if he really loves her, he should be able to let her go. Because people will always need Spider-Man, and his personal life will always suffer because of it, but it's the responsible thing to do. But no, we don't get any of that. Peter acts like a total doofus. He acts incredibly immature. He acts like a man half his age for basically no good reason besides life. Like I said, trying to establish a new status quo that most fans weren't happy with anyway and one that we're going to have to slog through for the foreseeable. And somehow, someway, we're not even done yet. We got one last issue in this storyline. Are you excited to see how Spider-Man is going to overcome Dr. Rabin? No, me either, because he's also been shown to be a total dork all series long. I'm going to be generous, though, and give this one a 4.5 out of 10 because I actually enjoyed the art a lot more in this issue, and believe it or not, I can actually imagine a an alternate universe wherein this story is, well, maybe not good, but certainly more interesting. Hey there everyone, Kate Joel again, and I just want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. It means a lot to me. And hey, if you enjoyed the book I covered in this issue and want some comics of your own, might I recommend Book Depository? It's my number one place for shopping for comic book trades. You get a great price, and if you use my link down in the description, you'll actually be helping me out at the same time. You get something, I get something, everybody wins, right? So until next time, 
time, everyone. I've been Joel, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.